Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am talking about when one thinks of God, when something bad happens. When one thinks of God, when something bad happens. You may have come across your share of people who, they're not really thinking about God when everything is good, right? You may even be like this too. Well, as long as everything is going well, I got my way. I've got my money, my house, my car, and whatever else I prayed about. Hmm, I'm going to take it easy on church. I'm going to take it easy on reading my Bible. I'm going to take it easy on a lot of things. You see, we've got some Christians who are spoiled. Oh, they win. Every time they open up their mouths, it seems, they win. They get what they want. People around them get blessed. Everything looks good. But then... Then if you're that one who is discerning, you sit back and you observe. Over time, you see that the Christian is not into God as much. Wait a minute. You've got all these victories. Shouldn't you be even more spiritual? Shouldn't you be even closer to God like never before? Because he has blessed you with so many different opportunities and things. But for some of these spoiled Christians, that's not what is happening. Instead, they are growing further and further away from the Lord. They are blind after a while to what God has done for them. They started off saying, thank you, Jesus, much. And then gradually they start saying things like, I did this and I did that and this is mine. And I will tell you that as a land, a land of opportunity, nationally, internationally, even, a lot, a lot of believers as well as unbelievers who have benefited off the backs of believers are quite spoiled. And so when things happen like a leader over an organization who is not necessarily a good leader or a owner taking over a company that was once thriving and yet The folks there don't necessarily like that owner or when a president, come on, a president shows up in an office and he's not the favorite. Hmm. People start getting aggravated. They get upset. Lord, why is it that these people are in this establishment or this group or even in the family? I mean, we were doing so well until you showed up. We liked that other person more than we like you. I mean, if we had to pick the lesser of two evils, it wouldn't have been you. What's going on here, Lord? Why are you doing these things? The Lord says that sometimes he allows these things to happen because for the simple fact is, is that as long as you got your way, you, you, come on, or somebody that you know, Well, you weren't thinking too much of me, were you? Ooh, there's a lot of prayer warriors lately. A lot of them. People who hadn't prayed in a long, long time. The Lord tells me in the spiritual realm that they're praying now. And I'm like, well, why? And I got the answer through one of my relatives. There was a simple statement made. A statement about how the individual was praying, praying that the least of them never made it to office. I'm sure a lot of folks want their not-so-favorite president, business owner, kinfolk, and what have you, not to be around them or come to certain establishments or be in (laughs) even the White House, But God, you pray to me because you don't want things to happen because you want your way. Lord said that, but as long as you got your way, you wasn't really that close to me. Come on, some black folks. I'm going to talk to them, right? I'm black, so I'm going to address them. You know, you was really happy. You had tears in your eyes when that black man showed up in office. And my grandmother, she checked out of here. But before she checked out of here, though, 
she got to see a black president in her lifetime and she said she thought she would never ever see it and it's funny though so many black folks got their way got some favor too ended up taking on quite a few positions that all before they never had never had until that black man showed up in the office and rather than draw nearer to the Lord you know what I saw it with my own eyes mm -mm. a lot of folks didn't draw nearer to the Lord while that black man was in office instead you know what they did they drew away from him they started getting cocky and confident and some of those uh, non-blacks they paid attention to that little cockiness and now for some people they reap what they sow what did you always think that you were going to be at the top did you always think that you were always going to get anything and everything when you wanted it you thought that you had so much favor right and the Lord said <laughs> you had to draw near to me to keep that favor and instead of drawing near you know what some of them did especially the elitists they didn't turn their hearts to the Lord they turned their hearts to gods plural and some of them even considered themselves to be gods so there was a movement, a movement that was going quite rapidly amongst certain elitist blacks of godship. And that sort of attitude and all of the things associated with it, the godlike type of philosophies and so forth, is what's bringing a lot of them down. So for every two steps that they make, made, they take four steps back with certain groups. Now this don't apply to everyone because not everyone is in those type of positions. Most of us, we are in what some would call subservient roles, right? We're not in those positions of firing and hiring or even creating or building and all of that. So when we're out here, we're pretty much taking orders from other folks. Unless, of course, you have your own business and then you are the one who calls the shots. But the favor, the favor that one seeks from the Lord, the opportunities and the can I get my way type of stuff that one seeks from the Lord you don't get your way oftentimes because God knows what happens in the future yes you get your way then you're gonna forget about me no I won't yes you will Jesus saw this before right he saw this before back when his disciples talking about they're not going to deny him he said yes yes you will <laughs> You see? And so we say that kind of stuff to the Lord. We say, look, if I get this, I'm telling you, Lord, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to do better. And some people, they do pretty well for a while. And then they fall right back into their old ways again. Because they get comfortable. They get comfortable. And that's what happened. Yes, I'm once again using <laughs> my folks. That's what happened with some of them. They got too comfortable and now the enemy is playing games with them, using them as nothing more than pawns in a game. You seeing these black folks running along and associating with the enemy, so to speak, or enemies, that's because they have no choice in the matter now. Some of them open up their mouths a little too much and so next thing you know they're being approached. And it's pretty much either you do this or we're going to expose you. You do this, play fair, be a good little boy. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, racist folks. Check out my audio on Veil Racism. You be a good little boy, you be a good little girl, and you serve your master well, and you just might get this money, or you just might get that building with your name on it, or you just might be able to own a few things, and I know you want your children and your children's children to own something, because we know that you got a long history of never owning anything. You see? And so these people, they go right along and play the game. No more than Judas 
who goes over there and works out a deal to turn over his master, his teacher, the great Messiah, to the authorities. Yes, yes, those who are very watchful and don't trust some of these people who are getting chummy chummy with some folks, you have every right to feel that way. They're Judases, Judases that wear some really nice clean suits, Judases who sit back and are self-important, got a lot of money, fame, power. Yeah, you should. You should be very concerned. Corrupt individuals, the Lord shows me in the spirit, people who work out deals to benefit themselves while they convince, while they convince themselves that they're doing it for all the right reasons. When we on the outside looking in know that is nothing more than selfish motive, selfish gain, all things selfish. So when you hear folks saying things like, why, oh, why, Lord, is it that the enemy seems to be winning and we at one point were victorious and so much good stuff was happening? Well, the Lord says that <laughs> quite simply, some folks just stopped praying. They stopped praying. They stopped paying attention to the word of the Lord. They stopped going after things that were righteous and true. They acted as if God wasn't in the plan. They didn't want to wait on him. They had issue with God. Many of them don't even believe in God. Others, they had a weak faith. Others, they just decided that they were going to go their own way. Yes, I believe in God, but still I'm going to do what I want to do. And so when you got a rebellious nation, rebellious organization, rebellious family members, right? rebellious partners this is what happens god turns his back on some things god ends up allowing some negativity to show up and show out in your atmosphere and then and then only then one will say okay i guess i'll pray i guess i'll try i'll i guess i'll do something different i guess i'll listen to what the lord's been telling me for a long time and the lord says okay finally i got your attention but sometimes it takes bad things to happen in order for people to get right with the Lord. Bad news, bad leaders, bad organizations, bad systems. You get the point in order for people to draw near to the Lord. You may not need bad stuff to happen in order for your uh in order for you to I should I should say for you to draw near to the Lord. You don't need it. But some people out there do need it. Like you may have been that child that didn't need the butt whippings because you knew to obey your parents because you knew what pain <laughs> was. Others, no, nah, uh -uh. it was going to take more than just a talking to in order to get them to listen and obey, right? Well, that's what happens with our spiritual father. He says that as long as I was talking to you and giving you what you wanted, it was okay, right? Our relationship was great. But then when I gave you some spiritual trials and I did some things a bit differently, you started cursing me and didn't want nothing to do with me and you turned your back, see? And so when we got these folks that surround us who get all bent out of shape because they're not winning because they didn't get their way because they've been spoiled little Christians for so long, right? All we can do is pray for them because we know that if they don't get it right, if they don't understand how God operates, at least to some degree, it's only going to get worse for them. It's not going to get better because God doesn't like rebellion, you see. And then we start watching people slowly fall right before us. How many times does a man have to lose his job for him to humble himself before the Lord? As well as <laughs> act humbly around others. Instead, they still don't learn. They still act stubborn. They still act prideful. So the Lord says, okay, I'm going to take this away from you again. You still don't learn a lesson, do you? Some men will die still not understanding, still not wanting to do right, still not humbling themselves. And it's unfortunate because God will give men so much grace, so much mercy, as well as women too. But the Bible often speaks of men, so that's why I'm saying men. So much grace, so much mercy, so much favor, 
He gets to live past 70 plus years and he still don't learn. He's still thinking that he got something special about himself. The reason why God has kept him around for all these years. When the reality is, is that it's just God. It's just God's mercy upon him. He's not ready to take him out of here just yet. He's hoping that he's going to get to that place where he just simply says, Abba, Father, please forgive me for my sins. Yes, you have been very gracious over the years. Yes, there has been many victories won. And now I need to start paying close attention to the lessons in these things that are taking place where it doesn't look like we're winning. I need to learn a thing or two, Lord. And so in this situation that I'm in, I'm going to learn. That's what the Christian should be saying. I'm going to learn instead of crying and praying and focus on everybody and everything. But Jesus, the Lord says you need to turn those prayers around instead of praying that somebody don't make it here and don't make it there. And your little favorite didn't show up and this, your little favorite didn't win and all this other stuff. Instead, you should be looking at what the lesson is in the losing in the battles, in the fact that somebody was able to flip the system in such a way where they won and everybody else lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people like to give the illusion, give the appearance as if they're angry and they're upset when in reality they're glad things go down in the way that they do because it's going to once again benefit certain groups. But if I know that the majority don't like somebody, right, then I don't want to put my personal opinion out there and raise up, you know what, mm -hmm. we got a lot of those that's out there too. So they go along just to get along. I'm telling you that we are in a time right now where People are going to have to get right with the Lord. You say that you love the Lord. You get him involved in your personal life and your pre professional life. And then when he tells you to do something, you don't want to do it. There's consequences. There's consequences to disobedience. Check the audio out on that. The only people that really get a pass at times on some of their foolish decisions and all of the stuff that they put upon people are people with some kind of mental illness I'm noticing. And I'm not saying this happens with everyone. I'm saying that some people, though, they get to pass with the Lord. I'm not talking about with men and women, because most often men and women are not forgiving. But I'm talking about with the Lord. And while we look at folks and we say, that one's off. That one don't have it together in their mind. But yet good stuff is happening to them. Why? Well, that's because God knows what's going on inside that person more so than we do. You see? And so he has his reasons for allowing some folks to get what they get despite their mental handicaps, their disabilities, and anything else. And instead of being the hater and being covetous and wondering why this one and that one gets so much, you need to be grateful, grateful that you don't have to go through all the trials that that person has to go through. What you need to do is also look toward your faults and your issues and why you think the way you think. A lot of times we think the way we think because somebody put some mess in the game a long time ago. To cause us to think a certain way. That happens in media all the time. Your thoughts are not your own. If you're watching a whole lot of garbage television. Those people, they have lots of education on psychology. And how things affect the mind, the body, and the spirit. And how they can get into your pocket. And take out your money. <laughs> get you to take out your money. And go buy yet another thing. So as much as some people think that they are in control of every little thing that goes on with their thoughts and with their habits, not necessarily. So as we continue to see things happening where it doesn't look like we've got the victory as believers, understand that there are lessons to be learned and that through this 
time that we are in, we should be in prayer and leaning on the Father, which most people are because of (laughs) the fact that they didn't get the victory or because they don't understand some things. So continue, continue to draw near to the Lord. And the next time you get your way, right, the next time you end up celebrating a victory, just remember not to sit too comfortably in that and forget about the Lord. You see, that's all. That's all you need to take from this message is just don't forget about the Lord when your time comes and you get your way again. Because for some of you, all I see it in the spirit. And there's one particular gentleman who's very close to me who I see in the spirit where God is going to give him favor. Once again, he's going to get what he wants. And the Lord is going to remind him to stay humble and not to be that one. That is being cocky and confident and walking around talking as if nothing can bring him down because God can. You see, God can. So I thank you so much for listening to God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. And if you would like to reach out to me, you can do that. There is... Uh, an email address that is uh, under one of the tabs. Uh, I do believe it's Nicole McGuire at gmail.com. And we can uh, just either uh, interview because I'm looking to interview some people who are spiritual in the future and who are definitely sold out for God. Um, I'm also looking for some individuals uh, who wouldn't mind submitting some guest posts to some of the blogs that I have out there. Um, you can check out faceyourfoe.blogspot.com for starters. And I get into spiritual uh, spiritual things. Um, there's audio, there's um, video, and there's articles on the site. And then, of course, individuals who just want to continue to uh, support, whether through comments, sharing links, or providing a a financial donation. Those are all accepted. Well, that's it. To God be the glory once again.